you know you know one of the things that i've uh, thought up but particularly enjoyed is uh, your uh, stories that the multiple stories that uh, you write about and you narrate is part of uh, karupan uh, and, and 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 the whole idea of karupan tunai where you know he he is there to support you in 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 whatever uh, form whatever uh, problems that you might uh, face and all so in any particular story that you would like to uh, share that is oh, uh, definitely yeah. definitely <laughs> i will save some for my book but i, I will mention quite a few yeah mm. so uh, uh one caveat Mm. stories goes across across villages right they change they merge with the local traditions right. i will i will talk about archetypes later uh, remind me if i forget mm. so certain traditions will actually have karpar sami as a vishnu amsham certain okay. traditions will have him as a form of a protector of devi certain traditions right. will have him as kala bhairava he is just a shakti so in case you have if a different traditions forgive me but i will just i will just tell the stories and folk stories that i know of uh we all know about asuras and arkas right mm. yeah so karpa swami is supposed to come from the line of the arkas arka kulam asura kulam asura kulam mm. yeah so when people say arka uh, oh that means he's uh, negative he's bad yeah in, in in fact in the tamil it is quite common arakan mari behave panna the kind of don't right. behave like an arakan so yes but you have to remember even pralada was a son of arakan as well yeah yeah, yeah. right we have in our in our worship we have yakshas we have uh, kinaras we have uh, bhutas just like mm. uh, just like us humans they are good ones they are bad ones as well so karpa swami i will tell you one story uh, from kilwail there's a village in kilwail it's one of the most oldest stories of karpa swami mm. uh, as you know in uh, tamil nadu side ayyar is the most uh, famous protector of Correct. all the villages very common uh, uh, very common across, and yeah. uh, and you yeah, are correct he is actually a version of uh, dharma shastra dharma shastra correct so there was once in this village that uh, ayana uh, was a protector but he had to leave the village for some time hmm. and when he came back he couldn't actually enter the village there was a kind of force field in that village and even he who was such a powerful protector could not pe- penetrate it and he realized that village was now under control of three witches magic practitioners whose magic he could not uh, use his powers to actually penetrate so he went to see his sister madhuri minachi mm. yeah so he is considered like a sister to to minachi so when he went to uh, see minachi he told minachi about this issue uh, sister i have this issue and then she told him i have 300 of the best warriors with me they are my personal bodyguards choose any one of them to you know follow you they will help you in this task so he went around looking at all the different uh uh bodyguards of us some he has worked with before some he had history with and then he came across this guy extremely fierce looking extremely black he was see guy in his mouth and he was like who is this guy and then uh devi said oh he is asra but he is now in our side because he mm. left he left the arkas when he realized that the arkas were doing bad things to human beings and all that so he's like okay i'll i'll take this guy along so ayanar and uh, karpa swami will actually go to the village so while there before anything would happen uh, karpa asked what is my payment mm. then ayanar said uh, what payment do you expect then he, I, uh, karpa was like in this village every year uh they give you the first uh, sacrifice uh for you know they have the worship every year they do they, they will do a good sacrifice or or do some sacrifice if i accomplish this task from next year onward i get the first sacrifice you get the second okay so what happened was okay uh ayanar will agree and he was looking toward karpar to uh you know use mantram to break the barrier but he didn't use mantram he just used his strength which shock ayanar like how are you going to break this without mantram for which karpar say mantram cannot affect someone who is full of courage and bravery and he mm. broke and he broke that uh that force wheel and released the village 
So from then, then, then onwards, right, Ayanar was no longer the uh, person who received the first sacrifice every year. He was the person who received the second sacrifice and Karpal got the first sacrifice. So that is also the reason why, you know, most uh, depictions of Karpal is fierce uh, with a uh, huge weapon in his hand and all of that. So, yeah, so, so okay. So that's a, that's a very interesting story. This, uh, so which means that uh, village had both uh, deities, right? Yes. Ayanar as well as Karupan, but Karupan uh, started getting the, became the Pradhanam in terms of getting the first of the sacrifices year after year. Very interesting. For sacrifice, I have to mention, because we were talking mm. about the differences between the Agama temples and all that, right? Right. Yes. So just as there are differences between Shabar Mantras and uh, Bija Mantras, in the Agama temple, I, I mean, I'm not an Agama expert, but the Agama temple has real strict protocols. You have how, yes. what, how you do a Kumbhabi Shagam, how many pujas the, the Devata has, the Mula Murti, the Utsava Murti, once a year bringing the, the Utsava Murti outside. And then, you know, uh, 12 years one is doing Kumbhabi Shagam. They have very, very strict protocols for to maintain the Shakti of the Devata in an Agama temple. But as you say, if you see a Grama Devata temple, uh, there's no such things. Mostly it's open, open space. They have big, uh, big, big murtis, not of karungal and things like that, just uh, cement, clay, things like that. Right. And very colorful as well. Yes, very, very, very colorful. And the Shakti is not maintained by strict ritual protocol. The Shakti is actually maintained by yearly sacrifices. Oh. Yeah, so as long as there's yearly sacrifices in these temples, the Shakti will be... Oh, maintained. yearly, yearly sacrifices. Okay. Yes, yearly sacrifices. And, right, and the right, sacrifices right. can be quite in, intense, you know. They would give like 500 goats. Mm. Yeah, so... And I know some people uh, in, a, in a modern era will be like, oh, sacrifices and things like that. Uh, they do not know our history. Uh, even for Murugan temples, if you actually read back on history, uh, example, our Tamil... Sangam text, Tirumurugatra Pade, for example, is a 3,000 year old text uh, which was written by Nakira. He will actually explain the six Arupade temples at that mm. point of time, 3,000 years ago. And now everything has been like systemized. They use uh, Saiva Siddhanta uh, worship uh, protocols. They don't even use the Kaumara, the Kaumara methods anymore. Kaumara is almost like uh, extinct these days. But back then, the Arupade temples, right? Uh, Different kulas went to the different temples. Uh, Nakiran mm -hmm. actually mentions one temple is where the rishis with matted hair, wearing a uh, tiger skin, they were skinny, they only uh, took in like, uh, what, what would they call it? Sunlight. They worship him, worship him through yogic methods. The andanas, the priests, they go to another temple of Murgar, they worship him through the fire. Then you have the hunters. The hunters, actually, they would serve Murgar in one temple with wild boar, uh, they call it Udumbe. Mm. Yes. And then the fishermen clan, they would even serve him alcohol. So there were different, different traditions and Murugan actually accepted all of them. Yeah. Now that you uh, brought Murugan into the picture, let me share something very interesting. You know, uh, you know that I write uh, on the Vishnu Sasranamam uh, on yes, yes. a regular basis. So one of the uh, names, name, uh, you know, uh, Namas 464 is uh, Veerabahu. Okay, Veerabahu is one of the, uh, you know, is, is one of, is, uh, you will find the Veerabahu in, as a Grama Devata also. I'm sure you have heard of Veerabahu. Now, uh, now this Veerabahu, uh, of the many tra translations that are available, one of them which was, I found extremely interesting was by uh, Radha Krishna Shastri, where he says that this Veerabahu is worshipped as the, uh, Veerabahu is that form of Vishnu where he agreed to become the commander in chief of Murugan's army. He is the most powerful. So he's, he's, he becomes what happens is that he takes a form where he becomes a minor deity and therefore a Grama Devata worshipped as Veerabahu, who is, uh, you know, uh, one of the most fearsome warriors uh, who works uh, who, as a commander in chief who works under uh, Murugan. Although, so that is another Amsha of Vishnu. So this kind of uh, tradition. These uh, kinds of multiple uh, traditions that we have, we seem to be, uh, you know, losing out is what I feel, you know, in, in many uh, places. In fact, uh, you mentioned that, uh, you know, in, in, in the write-up that you sent to me also is that 
the the kanchi paramacharya also was very particular that all of these uh, traditions need to be protected uh, you know it's not just about uh, you know having a type of worship today for example people will uh, frown upon uh, animal sacrifice or all of these things but without understanding that these are uh, practices that have been followed for a very 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 long time and there is a tradition that uh, that goes with it and then there are multiple stories within stories like for example like this one i said how many of us will know that veera bahu is a uh, you know amsha vishnu who is a commander who works uh, as a commander of murgan's armies for example